is Monday, March 22nd, and my name is Michelle Marcourt DeVoe, and I am the CEO of Faith Culture Kiss Studios and the founder of the Speakeasy Cooperative, and we are a company that gives personal development and professional development and coaching of all kinds, from marketing to uh, life coaching to Clifton Stearns coaching. We are a company that makes people better so they can run the businesses they want to run and therefore make their businesses better. And today I am here to talk about pricing. And the reason why I'm harping on pricing today and all the times is because I think it's one of the most misunderstood um, things within the independent voice professional world. And so I'm actually going to reveal to you some Thing that I do with clients in order to figure out their price points. This is one of those things. Have you ever been, and if you are here and this has happened to you, I would love for you to engage with this today. Have you ever been stuck in not making enough money? I mean, we're talking basic cover your bills hair money, okay? We're not talking about trying to be gazillionaires yet. Yet. Have you ever been stuck not making enough money no matter how much you work? no matter how much you work. Have you ever feel tied down in your pricing because of your market? Oh, I can't charge because I live in this area or that area, or oh, I need to charge X, Y, Z because I live in this area and I'm uncomfortable with that. Have you ever used your gut feelings to decide on a price? Just like feel it out, just like intuit it. If so, then today is definitely for you. This particular live is for people starting out in their pricing journey. So if you have an ecosystem of, pro of offers, if you have an ecosystem and you understand exactly where every price point fits in and what it's communicating psychologically, this is probably not your live. But if you are a person who has never really thought about your pricing in a very data-driven way, then this is for you right? And it's for anyone that you know that needs this. So please feel free to share this all over the interwebs with any person that you know, even outside the voice teacher industry, because this is, you can do this anywhere. Okay. If you've never thought strategically about your pricing, then we need to start doing this now. In my pricing philosophy that I teach in my programs, there's a six a six kind of question understanding philosophy that we use. We're only going to talk about the first concept. And the first concept today is when you are deciding your pricing, always start with what you want to and have to and or have to make. Always start with what you want to and have to make. So here's where we get screwed up and discombobulated. Hey, Stephanie, Stephanie Saban in the house. Here's where we get messed up. Most people who start a service-based business, especially a brick and mortar, especially voice teachers, will say, well, what do I think I can charge? And they will build a budget based around what they think they can charge and therefore make. The problem with that is, is you will never, ever, ever be satisfied with your pricing or with how much money you make because you'll always be chasing the carrot. You're always going to be basing your decisions on a piece of information that is not determined by you. It's always going to be something that you are beholden to instead of something that is serving you. So the first thing we need to do is figure out how much you want to and how much you need to make. Now, how do you do this? Well, you gotta get bold, you gotta get creative, and you gotta do math. Now, I want to tell you a story about math. I failed math all the way through all of the things. I'm going to tell you a very unpopular thing. I love Common Core Math. And the way that Common Core Math is teaching my kids to do math, if someone would have taught me that way, I would have been amazing at math. But I held a story for about 38 years. I held a story for 38 years that I was bad at math. 38 years. Budgeting is about four types of math, addition, 
subtraction, multiplication, and division. Okay? Basics. Y'all got that. We can do this. The psychology part of budgeting is getting into the nitty gritty and not allowing shame or some story somebody's telling you about what you're allowed to spend money on and what you're not allowed to spend money on to be there while you are creating the life that you want. So how do you figure out what your budget is for what to price in your business? We're going to need two budgets. The first budget is your personal budget because you have to know how much you're going to take in your own, if you're a sole proprietor in your owner's draw or your salary. It's not a true salary because you might, you're probably not a W-2 employee of your own business. If you are a W-2 employee of your own business, then this probably is going to be way too simplistic for you and you've already figured this out. So, <laughs> but here we go. If you're a sole proprietor, I want you to pretend like you are an employee and I want you to figure out how much money you need to take home as your wages. In the United States, this is called your owner's draw. So you're going to do your personal budget first. What goes in a personal budget? Well, all of your basic needs. What about anything else that you want to put in there? Like what about your fun? What about your entertainment? Groceries, uh, your mortgage or your rent, utilities, uh, maybe your cell phone. And yes, it is true that as a sole proprietor, some of these things you can use for your taxes and stuff, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're just figuring out how much money do we need to make. So you're gonna figure this out for both your monthly, what do you spend money on every month? And then you're gonna look at it annually. What are you spending on once a month, or once a year rather, right? Yes, add the shopping and the new shoes. Please, 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 please. In your budgets, always, always, always put what you want, not what you have. Always put what you want, not what you have. Because if you don't put what you want, then you won't price for what you want and you will never have enough money for what you want. So you have to figure out what you want. Now, this might mean that you do two budgets, your real, like real time, this is what's happening to me right now budget, and then your dream budget or your goal budget or your stretch budget, right? That's what you gotta do first. Personal, how much money, do I need to pull as a salary? Then the second budget you need to do and the addition you need to figure out is your business. How much does it cost to run my business separately from what I pay myself as an owner's draw and separately from my taxes, what I'm gonna put aside from taxes? So what do we have to pay for when we are in a business? Well, a lot of stuff computers, microphones, printers, printer ink, continuing education should be on there, friends, continuing education, any travel that you want to do for your business, say like go to a conference. And I mean, I don't know about you, but my travel budget is going to about triple as soon as this COVID-19 thing goes away, right? I'm like building that in now, saving up all the money to go to all the conferences everywhere in person, right? What else do you need for your business? There's so many things. Yes, treats, electronics. I love how Stephanie's saying, what, if there's anyone else listening in, what is in your business budget? And you know what, you can talk to an accountant and you can say, hey, can I actually use this as a business expense? Because some of the things we forget, we're like, oh, I can actually use that as a business expense. I think I shall do that, right? So all of the things that you need to just run your business. Okay, and then you're gonna add those two numbers together. So you're gonna say, okay, I wanna make, I wanna bring home $80,000 into my, yep, music, there you go. I'm gonna bring $80,000 as my owner's draw, right? I'm gonna set aside, I don't know, $20,000 of that for taxes. So that brings me to 100,000. And then it costs me, um, let's say 50,000 to run my business, right? We're using big grandiose numbers here to normalize these kinds of numbers in studios. So let's say you have a $150,000 goal, yearly revenue goal. What you wanna do is you want to base your pricing based on what's called, I call a billable hour or a sellable hour. 
so that you get an idea of how much money each hour that you are selling to people needs to cost in order for you to reach your goal, okay? This does not mean, I wanna just say this real quick, this does not mean that your one-to-one -one lesson has to cost this. However, if one-to-one -one lessons is the only revenue stream that you have, then yeah, it's gonna have to cost this, <laughs> right? So then when you get this number, that's when you start realizing, oh, do I have the brand to support this price? Do I have the desire to support this price? Because supporting this price is a totally different customer service experience than supporting this other price. That's, or can I add more revenue streams? Can I add getting money that has nothing to do with my business? Can I learn to invest? Can I learn to do real estate? Like whatever it is. But knowing what that number is gives you data about how you want to price everything, okay? Sometimes it'll work out. If you have a lower revenue goal and let's say your entire revenue goal, you run a very lean business, maybe you're part-time and it's only like 50K or 30K, you might just be able to go with your number, right? You're with your billable hour number as your one-on-one -on -one price. But if you have some larger business goals, you're probably going to need more than one revenue stream in order to support that billable hour cost. So let's say again, we started with 150K as what we wanted to make. So here's where we're gonna go into the formula that I promised you. We're gonna take that yearly annual, it's 150K. Then we're gonna do some math. First of all, we're gonna decide how many hours we want to charge for in a week. So how much face-to-face -face time do you want in a week? When I usually start with people in this, we do 20, I'm gonna get my phone and do, I don't do math in public in my head. It is always on the calculator because that's just better for everybody involved. Okay, so you're gonna decide how many hours. I like to start, if, if this is gonna be your only revenue stream, I like to start with kind of like the therapy model or other um, intensive one-on-one -on -one service-based models, which is considers about 20 hours a week as full time because you have that face-to-face um, -face hour and then you usually have about an hour of note-taking and admin and working toward that. So let's say you want to work 20 hours, I'm writing it down here, 20 hours a week. Then you're going to decide how many weeks in the year do I want to work? So what we're doing with this formula with the weeks of how many hours a week and then how many weeks in a year is we're really figuring out how many hours, how many units of something we have to sell, right? And if we're a service-based industry, that means that we are literally selling time, although we're not pricing for time, we're pricing for value, right? You're not selling your time literally, but you need this as the business owner to understand. Stephanie says that she would like to work, I don't know, Stephanie, if you want two hours a week or two weeks a year. I am not sure, but either way, you will have a very impressive billable hour if you choose that. So let's say, um, why don't we like really go for gold here, like live the high life and say 40 weeks a year. And that would give you like your whole summer off, probably a, some weeks for uh, spring break and all of that, two weeks a year. Stephanie would like to work two weeks a year. Girl, you can figure it out. We could figure out how. We could figure it out. I'm sure we could figure it out. Um, let me fix my exposure here because I'm looking awful. The sun comes through the window and makes my face look terrible. Okay, so let's say 40 hours a week. I mean a year, I'm so sorry. 40 weeks a year, sorry. 20 times 40, no math in public, even though that's easy and I already know it. Always 800 hours, right? So now we know we have 800 hours that we will have to bill for. And we have our 150,000 goal. So then we're going to divide 150,000 by 800 hours. Okay, math, one, five, zero, 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 divided by 800, boop. You now know that if you want to make $150,000 in revenue, every hour that you sell 
has to somehow become the equivalent of $187.50. So I would like round that up to 188 or 190. And that's when you would have the come to Jesus talk with yourself about, okay, is this a billable hour that I can support? Is this a billable hour I can support? Can I support it with my brand? Can I support it with my unique value proposition? Can I support it with the type of clientele that I've chosen? Can I support this with the location in which I live? Now that we're online, you can support any price. You really, really can because the world is your oyster. But it's going to be your job to make sure that you can come up with a $190 an hour value for the people who are paying you if you so choose to stick with this actual billable hour, right? Okay. You can also pull other levers, all right? So we just figured you would have to teach 20, let's say this is your only revenue stream. You would have to teach 20 people a week for 40 weeks of the year and each one of those people would have to pay you about $190 an hour in order for you to make that 150,000 revenue goal. Now. Let's say you do not want to support that branding. Let's say you're like, hmm, I don't really think that I want to do that. I don't think that I want to serve that clientele. I don't think that I want to create that kind of unique value proposition in my business. I think I'd like to have multiple revenue streams. Well, now at least you have data. So let's say you say, well, I'm actually only going to charge half of that, right? I'm going to charge half of that because that's what feels like it's right for the entire situation. And this is where the psychology comes in, right? Because we have different relationships to money based on what we perceive the value of what we are paying for is. And that's what my blog was about last week and what I sent my email about to my email list. So if you're not on the, my main email list, please join it. And then um, you won't get last week's blog, but you can get last week's blog. And there's a couple at the end there, there's some links to some uh, articles about pricing psychology that I think are important for us to know because whether we like it or not, or whether we're comfortable with pricing psychology or not, it's a thing and you use it every day, I use it every day. It affects us every day because of the cultures that we live in. So let's say we decide to, I don't know, what's 190? Divided by two. Math in public. Divided by two. $95. So let's say we decide $95 an hour is going to be our one-on-one -on -one rate. We know that whatever we come up with outside of that, it has to support a price point of making us another $95 in that hour. And that's when you can start talking about passive income. That's when you can start talking about um, downloadables. You can talk about um, group classes. You can talk about things that are now adding revenue streams and scale. But you have real data. Now here's the wonderful part about this. If you are an independent teacher and you've never really thought of this before, what's so exciting is that it's all wrapped in already because you've done the math up front, you've done the budgeting up front. So have you ever been in that situation where you're charging a thing and then all of a sudden you're like, oh crap, it's like costing me a ton of money to buy music or it's costing me a ton of money to um, offer this person extra time and do something for them. When you know how much you want to make up front and when you are in control of that decision, and you've priced for that accordingly, you have the power to be generous. You have the power to say yes, because you know that you are making what you need to make. You now have what's called a key performance indicator. You now have what Peter Drucker calls a measurable, right? And what gets measured gets managed. I want everyone to price based with data first. And yes, please, if you're ready to have like an ecosystem conversation 
where it's not just about your one-on-one -on -one price point, but it's about your scaled offers, that's a one-on-one -on -one conversation because that's another level of pricing psychology and it's another level of understanding buyers and how people buy and all of that kind of thing. And we can have that conversation one-on-one, -on -one. but I want you to have this data. I want every time you decide a price from here on out to be based on what you want and need to make, whether it's a workshop, whether it's one-on-one -on -one lessons, whether it's a tuition plan, so that at the end of the day, you can say, I know I can say yes, I know I can be generous, and all I've gotta do is worry about selling this thing. I don't have to worry about, oh, I need to get that, uh, uh, all of that, right? If I could only get another student, if I could only get 10 more dollars, 15 more dollars, decide it, choose it, <coughs> build the brand and the business around it, build the value around it, and make what you need to make. All right, friends, thank you so much for joining me today. Again, this goes way beyond just voice teachers. This is any service base, and this is the first step, okay? This is just the first step. But if you've never priced like this, if you've never priced where you figured out your money first, you've gotta do it. That is the first step toward pricing freedom. Don't ask your friends what they charge. Don't ask people what in the area they charge. That comes last. And market comes last because it gives you data around where you sit in the market, not what you are allowed to charge. You are permission granted, y'all. You are allowed to charge whatever you want. You just gotta support the cost, in my opinion. Some people don't think that you need to figure out value. They just say, do the data and then charge it and people can pay it or not pay it. I personally have more of an integritous, um, I want you to work to provide the value based on what you think. So. That's my formula that I teach. Now, what's the difference between, so we're starting the new How to Run Accelerator in May. There's only like, well, I have to decide if there's three slots left or eight slots left because I'll have to create another cohort. But this is the point that I'm trying to make. If you, if, if you choose to do more work on this, but you start here, that's when it can get fun and interesting about how you're pricing other things. And it also informs what kind of things you want to create based on your capacity and your bandwidth to create them, right? So for example, you know you're already cooking in the one-on-ones and you just need to change the branding and the price point. How you get from one a new an old price point to a new price point is a different live. We're not gonna talk about that now. But um, what you wanna do, for example, is if you're already cooking in that, then you can say, well, what do I have emotional capacity for and immediate um, understanding of that I can create a low ticket offer to help people who maybe need to get to know me better or maybe need just a little bit of data but don't wanna like invest in a whole big thing, right? That's when you can say, okay, I know that I want to create a downloadable or a small class or something like this. I want to charge X amount and it will cover X amount of that billable hour, right? Um, there's fancy math and accounting words for all this, but for now, let's just say it's called a pricing ecosystem. Yeah. Okay. Who's in my, who is in my comments? Hey, everybody. Hey, Stephanie. There's two Stephanies here. You're welcome, Stephanie Sabin. Hello, Stephanie Chevalier. Did I say your name right? Hi, Alina. Thanks, Michelle. You are so motivating. I mean, like, what am I going to do? Say no to that? Thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. That was very kind. You're welcome, Elizabeth. Julene is here. Thanks, Michelle. You're always so, oh, look at this nice thing. I like to put the, the nice things people say because there's enough trolls in the universe. Cool, you are so very welcome. All right, friends, share this with people that you need to share it with. Love people that you need to love. Make some money, do some awesome things, and then we'll talk about, we'll, we'll talk about amazing things later, right? All right, I will talk to you later.
Bye. Oh, Julie, I'll see you in the PMs.